Uh, hi, everybody, and good afternoon. And thank you again for joining uh, us for this awesome meeting. I mean, this is the eighth year or ninth year I've been doing this, and every year it gets better and better. I want to applaud uh, Joe, uh, obviously, for all of his work he's put into this and for really broadening the scope of the meeting to talk about topics such as this, which are which what, what we see in practice and how can we manage patients with acne scarring. And we're going to talk about some difficult cases today and how we manage them or how I'd manage them in my practice and um, hope you can get some information out of this. So thanks again to the organizers and uh, thanks for paying attention. These are my disclosures. So acne scarring, we, we, we've seen it in patients every day and we see it in even in figures. This is Eric, Eric Schmidt, who's the former um, head of Google uh, and then uh, Bill Murray here and these are, these are um, you know, people that have lived with and thrived with acne scarring, but we all have patients every day who have a hard time dealing with other people in social situations because of their acne scarring. And the question is, how can we, can we help them? It's a very common complaint with acne. I mean, the, the spectrum of acne complications can encompass from acne scarring to acne erythema to post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation on the physical side, on the mental side, there's an impact on the self-image. There's obviously body dysmorphia and depression um, and even severely acute uh, suicidal thoughts can all occur as a result of acne. So I think we all can all agree that getting acne under control as quickly as possible is something everybody in the audience would like to do with their patients. In some studies, it's been shown that 95% of acne uh, patients have scarring to some degree. Um, and some have reported other lower incidences, but uh, it, uh, it can appear in different forms um, very early during the disease process and can have a big impact on physical, um, on self-esteem. So there's actually some studies that have shown, um, from Jerry Tan, that have shown as early as six to eight weeks after lesion formation, you can see acne scarring. Of course, more inflammatory, I think you'll, you'll get it sooner. But uh, it, so tell me an effective therapy of acne, acne uh, active acne is so important. Um, and we really wanna shut down the follicular inflammation and we wanna uh, shut that down so the dermal defect doesn't occur uh, that can lead to depressed acne scarring and other types of scarring such as atrophic acne scarring. New scars, form, newly formed scars can resolve or normalize on their own. Uh, but some of these uh, uh, may not, and especially the atrophic ones, and they may end up being permanent. There was a six-month um, observational study of patients with modern inflammatory facial acne, and about one-third of the scars formed during that, uh, during that process resolved spontaneously with time. But quite a few of them would require correction of the persistent scars, and there's many ways to do that. We'll talk about it. The reference for that article I talked about is below. So let's take this patient. Again, this is a case-based talk, and we want to try to, you know, to, to bring up real-world scenarios. So in this patient, you can see she has on the nose some punched-out acne scarring uh, in terms of ice pick scarring and some boxcar scarring. Uh, she already has some porosity to her nose. And then you can see on the uh, cheeks here, nas nasolabial folds, also some ice pick scarring. And then also down, um, you can even see some inflammatory lesions still appearing in the perioral area, which is consistent with female um, adult onset acne. What happens if you punch one of these scars out? You can see here, and that's what I did, and you can see that the lesions are pretty deep. I mean, they go down, um, down through the reticular dermis, um, even deeper approaching the uh, origins of the phyllosebaceous unit. And so that's what makes these very difficult to treat is the fact that you've got to get down into this area here really and cause some type of change to affect contour deformity here to be able to minimize the appearance above. One technique you can do is this TCA across technique. And this is just an image I pulled um, from, I borrowed from a colleague and we, I, I've modified it by taking a TB syringe. You can see with a 32 gauge Becton Dickinson insulin syringe and actually placing, injecting the TCA directly into those ice pick scars. You really have to be careful about lateral spread. And so nowadays I'll actually surround this with some, some Aquaphor Vaseline and then pierce the center because I don't want that 
Um, and we're talking TCA of 50 to 90%. It depends on what you want to use here. So you don't want it to go into unaffected areas. And then in this particular setting, they punched out um, and excised some of the, some of the, the bigger atrophic scars at the same time. So this combination therapy to help this patient with predominantly ice pick scarring. And this is a patient of skin of color who presented with just this isolated scar that she was bothered with on the cheek. Some other ice pick scars near the nose, but not too worried about it. So how would you approach this? I mean, there's different ways you can do it. If it's a rolling or uh, what we call a um, depressed ostensible scar, just simple fillers, dermal fillers, like uh, you could pick one that you like, um, uh, probably the mid G prime type fillers. Um, I don't know if I can use trade names, but um, any of those that would work for the, for the nasolabial fold would work in this area as well. And we use sort of a, a technique where we go in and create pillars in the area, injecting deep down and withdrawing vertically to create these pillars, which you can fill in that volume deformity. But uh, she wanted, she didn't want to do fillers. She wanted something else more natural. So here we actually went used uh, microneedling, conventional microneedling, which is pretty commonplace known at this point in time. And this was an 11 pin microneedling device with several treatments and different depths of penetration from a half a millimeter to 2.5 millimeters in depth. And you can see the nice improvement. And this is all from collagen stimulation and filling in that defect naturally. Now it's not perfect, but it became a lot less noticeable to her and she was happy with that. So what is microneedling? I mean, you've all seen this, but these devices can be adjusted. Um, this is an example of a sort of a stamping pattern. And then let's say this is the target that you want to treat. You can put something on the skin to help glide, help the help the uh, arf, uh, the the needle tip glide, and we'll go along in this sort of pattern, and we'd make several passes at several depths. So here's another case. So this patient has, uh, I feel obviously type five um, African American skin, and. Her biggest issue really, I mean, she had some acne earlier on, but you can see there was post-inflammatory pigment changes that really just depressed her. And these have, been, these have been present for years. She does have a little bit of ice pick scarring and prominent pores, but she can live with that. But if you look closer I and mean, she's got pigment even unevenly distributed around the mouth and the cheeks. And so some of this is from generalized photo aging or rubbing the skin or just accumulating over time. So we use a technique um, with the 1064 long pulsed laser called laser toning. And that actually works very well. And in that technique, you take a high rep rate, a low fluence and a large spot size. And you just go over these areas, multiple passes, just to get some mild erythema as your endpoint and, um, and stop. And then every treatment we escalate. So we would actually start with about 1.1 1 .1 or 1 1.2 joules here. And we'll go up about every, by a tenth of a joule every time. And you can see a really nice improvement. This is multiple treatments. So I would say six to eight treatments. There's minimal downtime, but you get a really nice improvement and a very safe improvement following this regimen uh, in the entire, indeed in the entire phase pigmentation, but also in the post-inflammatory changes that she was worried about as well. So this is something that you can do in skin types four, five, and six. And again, this is the long pulsed NDAG laser. And this procedure is called laser toning. It's very popular in Asia for that reason. It has minimal downtime and the risk is very minimal. Now, what if the scars are deeper? Well, what we've been able to do over, uh, over the past 10 years is develop treatments like non-ablator fractional laser here, um, which can penetrate to different depths depending on the energy. And these depths, again, we're trying to get to the base of the scar, uh, the dermal defect, if you would, and get some collagen stimulation there, which would presumably impact and improve the, the volume of those scars. Now you can also do it with other energy-based devices. This is a RF microneedling device. So the needles can be adjusted to different depths, such as one, 1 1.5, 2.53. Um, in comparison would say, um, conventional monopolar RF devices or CO2, which you can see in this diagram. But here on the left, you can see the energy is deposited at the tip of the needle and um, very little energy is, is deposited at the surface, unlike the other devices. And so here you get uh, sparing, relative sparing on the epidermis. Um, you get the same in monopolar um, RF, relative sparing on the epidermis. 
uh, but uh, but you can't get to an appreciable depth sometimes to affect acne scarring. And again, with CO2 or any of the ablative lasers like this, um, you will ablate the epidermis and that can cause some pigmentary issues. Here's just some histology showing uh, uh, focal changes in the collagen, the thermal injury caused by uh, the RF microneedling devices. Now, why are these important for this lecture? Here's, here it is, one, dropping down to a deeper depth and then an even deeper depth to get nice improvement. So in a patient such as this, who has a darker skin of color and has depressed ostensible acne scarring and some box car scarring. Now, unfortunately, she only came for one treatment, but with the RF uh, microneedling and RF uh, and non-ablative fractional lasers, you can see a really nice improvement in the, in the contour deformities and very, very minimal effect on the pigment. So I think if she come back for multiple treatments, she would have been even happier and happier um, uh, with the subsequent treatments. But uh, it's an example of how you can bypass the epidermis to improve acne scar. What about post-acne erythema? Well, why does it happen? We think it could be due to changes in dilated small capillary dermal microvasculature, or you get this kind of uh, immature microvascular which are forming or inflammation or all the three. And uh, it can be persistent and it can be more bothersome than the acne papule itself. Um, there have been uh, proposed treatments, including topical retinoids, which can normalize this topical steroids for the inflammation and, uh, and topical agents for the reduction of redness. Um, the lasers are a very good option here, including the pulse dial laser, uh, the intense pulse light, um, vacuum assisted or non-vacuum assisted, by long pulse 532, and even a fractional uh, non-ablative lasers can help with some of this erythema. So this was a case of a patient that had uh, this uh, pulse light with vacuum assisted. Um, uh, this device is called the TheraClear, and you can see with just a single treatment, uh, you get improvement because of the vacuum with the lesional, with the comedones and inflammatory papules. But look at the improvement with the post-inflammatory erythema. And again, the, the, the pulse light is a device that emits in different spectrums. And in this particular case, going from about 515 all the way to about 1200 nanometers. And, and so it's nicely absorbed. But because we were able to use a very low energy with the vacuum, uh, it, it, it causes minimal damage to or minimal harm to the surrounding melanin and is more preferentially absorbed by the erythema. So here, really nice improvement. Um, and of course, you do want to continue with acne medications to shut this uh, down because you still have some active acne. Uh, this was a device which we used a, uh, a, a microsecond uh, 585 uh, nanometer uh, uh, device, a Q-switch device actually in a different mode. And that was used to target in this particular study that was done with a colleague of mine in Thailand to study, to, to target the, uh, to study the erythema post-acne. And again, you can see a really nice improvement. And again, this is skin of color patient, so uh, I wouldn't be turned off by the, the, the challenges of treating skin of color. In fact, I, I like to consider them um, some of my reward, most rewarding cases. So sometimes treating acne scarring is not just an exercise in using one therapy, because the reality is that you get a different morphology of acne lesion with most patients that have acne scarring. So you can have a combination of say ice pick, depressed ostensible scarring, box car scarring, all in the same uh, patient. And you have to learn how to address that. And with TCA cross, RF microneedling, non-ablator fractional lasers, subcision, and even injectable dermal fillers, you can combine a lot of these, believe it or not, in the same therapy, at the same session, and improve uh, the patient by targeting different types of acne scarring. So the, we will show you a case here, but this is from one of my uh, my associates, Dr. Payman Kasari, who did this procedure and um, used all these different modalities at the same time. So this patient presents with this crib, so almost looks cribiform, but it's depressed, distensible acne scarring on the cheeks and chin. And you can see the before and after picture here with the after picture on the right showing a really nice contour improvement. Well, how did we get there? Well, the first step is really delineating what type of scars you're dealing with. And we've got, you know, as I mentioned, the, the, the depressed ostensible scarring, 
um, the box scar scarring, which can cause, be caused by more of these fibrotic strands that are tethering the scar to the base of the dermis. Uh, we talked about ice pick scarring already, and all these things can happen at the same time. So when you're marking these things out, it's really important to use ind indirect lighting. And you can see here that we're, we're sort of filling these scars in the depressions based on that tangential indirect lighting and then marking out the area. We do a lot of substitution in our practice and here we use an angulated uh, no core needle to break up the tethering bands before we even get started with the rest of the treatment. And we get right under the skin subdermally and we break up those bands and that in and of itself can lead to some improvement. And now we're adding some energy here in the way we're in the, in the way of RF microneedling, probably going to 2.5 and, and two millimeters of depth because we want some dermal heating to stimulate collagen regeneration. And then in this particular case, um, we're actually using uh, an injectable uh, PRP and topical PRP here to promote uh, wound healing in these patients after treatment. And then LED light, which in this case, it leads to 980 LED, pulsed LED to help with healing. So all these treatments led to that result. And you can see a close up with really nice improvement and the depressed acne scarring. And in fact, if you look really closely, the ice pick scarring has improved as well. Here's another view. And here's another view at the left side of the face with a nice improvement. There's still some mild erythema, which will fade over time. Uh, and the patient continues to improve. So some of the more difficult cases we've had, this is one that before I really started doing this back in, this, back in the 90s or 2000s, early 2000s, when we started doing acne scarring. And I would have done, I would have definitely done a combination therapy on this patient. Here you can see where it would help the erythema a little bit and the depression, but it's still pretty prominent. They still have act, I have act, had active acne. And if you look at the cross-polarized view on your right, he was not happy with the acne erythema that we didn't improve um, and still needed to do some treatments on the contour deformity. So this is a tough case. Um, and this would probably require multiple treatments just because of the depth of the areas that, that needed treatment and the acne erythema. What about some really difficult cases? Well, this patient had had, had, had a fully ablative CO2. She was older in her early 50s, so she had aging and laxity on top of acne scarring, which you can see very, very um, noticeably in the pre-jowl sulcus um, and in the mid cheeks. And so in this case, we did that combination treatment and really focused on RF microneedling with the device that has a longer than one, one second pulse duration. And we got some really nice collagen restimulation and that in of itself help the laxity and the acne scarring at the same time. And we could go back and do some fillers for the areas that uh, remained uh, depressed, but you can see the, the volumization from an energy-based device treatment can be very impressive. And this is a relatively permanent improvement, although aging will still march on. This is a case of papular acne scarring, and this is one that I have a difficult time treating. Just to bring it to your attention, she does have some active acne going on, but on the chin especially, you see this papular acne scarring, and it can be pretty distressing and very difficult to treat. And this last really difficult case of a patient that has had ice pick scarring, but also the sinus tract formations that occur, and you get some, this, you can see this really extensive deep scarring on the cheeks with box car, with uh, fixed scarring and um, the sinus tract formation. And uh, this patient had actually had been so depressed, had not left his house in years, we did some combination therapy with CO2 laser and also excising some of these deep sinus tracts and reapproximating them with deep dermal sutures and top sutures. And uh, even though we had, you could see some of the scarring there, the depth of the scarring was still improved. And um, he actually was able to leave the house and um, felt a lot better about himself. So I'm gonna end there and I appreciate uh, your walking with me through these complicated acne scarring cases. And I'm happy to talk to you after the talk, after my speech or after uh, stopping the meeting. So thank you again very much for your time.